Hi everyone, and welcome to the newest part of the Kyrene Guide. It's been a little while, but today we're going to be going over topic B of neutral, talking about some basic misconceptions people might have over what might be neutral, and just basic things you shouldn't be doing. Common like gimmicks you might want to do online that may seem pretty good at first, but screws you over in the long run. So first we're going to be talking about buttons. Buttons are awesome, right? Our character has one of the best buttons in the game. Look at this. Look at her range. It's pretty awesome. But the biggest issue we kind of have with our buttons is that we get overzealous about what ranges are optimal for our characters or how many times we can be pressing our buttons. And especially we forget about the fact that other characters can have great buttons too, like Mr. Bison right over here. So one of our biggest buttons that we've had over the years has been Standing Medium Kick. It's gotten nerfed a little bit between seasons, but it's still one of our most punishing buttons. It's fantastic over keeping people at a certain range and not letting them come in. However, one misconception a lot of people seem to have is constantly pressing the button, thinking that that's creating proper spacing. Now, spacing is very important in this game, but you have to be looking out for what they're using and what they're trying to get in for. This M. Bison specifically may try to be dashing in, and this button is fantastic for punishing it. For example, Bison may want to start dashing in because that's what Bisons want to do, so they just want to get in, right? So, if they're trying to get in in a very, like, haphazard way, just being very reckless, you can just use Standing Medium Kick. Get out of here. Stay out of my range. But you're gonna have to time it properly. So let's just say an example. We're gonna be mashing, right? And let's not factor in something as basic as dashing in. Let's just factor in they also have an idea on proper spacing with their buttons. So I'm gonna show you a little example real quickly. So let's say we're M. Bison's doing is a very strong patent and down forward heavy punch. Very good button. You can still stuff it, but if we start mindlessly pressing crap, you can get crushed. It gives him the crush punish and it also lets him get in on free potentially uses the X meter and make your life a lot harder. You have to be thoughtful about your button presses. Let's look at the frame data real quickly. So Karin does have 8 frames of startup for her move, but M. Bison has 18 frames of startup. So on paper you're thinking, oh, 18 frames for M. Bison, 8 frames for Karin. Karin's move must be better. They both have 3 active frames, so Karin's standing meeting kick must be better. But you also have to remember something. There's this little thing called weighing in how much reward you get. And M. Bison specifically, his reward is that he gets a crush counter. Karin keeps away the person. That's awesome and that's great. But you also have to remember the fact that Karin's reward is he stays away. Just a little bit more, but he has another opportunity of getting in. It doesn't do that much damage, but again, they stay away. But M. Bison, his reward is that he gets a crush counter, he gets a follow-up, he potentially could get a knockdown if he starts allocating his meter properly. The idea behind all of this is to realize how much you want to weigh in your reward versus how much he's weighing in his reward. M. Bison's reward is far greater. His move, a little bit riskier. You have to remember, risk and reward is incredibly important in neutral. On top of that, pressing standing medium kick on block is still minus 4, so you lose your turn. So on top of that, we're talking about standing medium kick, right? You might be also worried about the fact that it's minus 4. Minus 4 means pretty much any character that has a 4 frame move or less can punish, correct? And you might be thinking, oh that's negative on block, I should be careful about that. And that's true, you absolutely should remember it's minus 4. But we do also have this nice little thing known as pushing the character back, so... We're having M. Bison do his standing light punch. Because of the length that Karin gets pushed back, Bison can't really punish that. Now that doesn't mean that it applies with every character. You're gonna have to go in and try to train and see what specific buttons work with what characters and whatnot. We'll come back on this later when we're talking about sweep. But basically the idea that you want to get is to know what characters react to what buttons properly. Bison? Nah, no, screw this man. If we're talking about different moves, for example, Let's maybe go into standing heavy kick. We're gonna try to do the same crap again, right? And we're accounting for pushback. Now we get crushed. You have to remember, different characters have different ways of punishing you, and you have to get a read on what buttons your opponent is making. That's no good, right? So you're thinking to yourself, 
oh, okay, well, that's no more. No more of that, right? But again, range is also another thing. Minus four on block, right? But he can't reach. Range is important when you're accounting for frame data. Brian F. actually goes over very interesting videos that says this in perfect detail, and I highly recommend looking it up. And basically the idea is you can't be just pressing buttons and thinking to yourself, oh, well, this is minus four, so I can't press this button again because I'm negative. Range is also really important. This button, minus four on book. You can't do it up front. No duh, right? You're gonna get crushed. But, just a little bit more spacing. And look at that. You got yourself a nice little punish when he's trying to press buttons. Now, although it may seem we're out of the woods and we have a basic idea on how to handle on Bison, there are still some ways that he can still punish you. For example, I'm trying to do the max range standing medium kick. And now I get scissor kicked. But again, look at the meter. M. Bison has three CA bars. He has to use meter for such a low risk move that I'm doing. This is a move I get to press a lot in neutral. Granted, we're put in a block situation and Bison is closer to us. He still had to use a meter or bar. You have to remember, risk versus reward. Bison, he had to use a CA bar. Me, Bison is now in. And he did waste a bar. You have to weigh it in. Did I want M. Bison to get in or not? Do I have ways of pushing him off, such as using my B meter or getting a read on what he's going to do next? This is where you have to figure out the player and not just the character. So now you might be considering deeper into the neutral and thinking to yourself, man, now what do I do? This is where you start getting a read on your player on if they want to autopilot or not. So if you press standing medium kick and press another button, you get scissor kicked. But what if we start conditioning them? And now M. Bison is starting to get conditioned. He just wasted a meter. He got stuffed. We're back where we are. So once again, let's try this. He got stuffed. He got pushed back. He lost a meter. Bison lost a lot. And when Bisons lose meters, they do hurt. Bison has trouble getting in, but what we effectively did was we won the neutral in that particular instance telling him, hey, you just tried to get in, I just made you waste a bar of uh, meter, you lost a tiny bit of health, and you got pushed back to where you are. It's almost as if nothing happened other than you losing meter. And this is how you kind of get an idea on getting a read on the player and trying to mix up your ideas and trying to mix up your buttons. Mindlessly pressing standing medium kick, there's going to be an answer, right? But beginning to use your buttons, being a little bit clever, getting a read on the player, seeing what they want. This is where you start getting really into the concept of neutral and understanding that your character is more than just a good button or a good gimmick. You need to think in 4D with your character, not in some two-dimensional way. So now we're gonna be talking about the idea of whiff punishing. So this is a pretty common M. Bison string, one you might see a lot online in. And yes, granted, he's minus two. His turn is over. There is a very important factor that he gets in, and when Bison gets in, it's hella harder for Karin to push him back. Correct? So this is where the idea of whiff punishing comes in. Stopping him from getting in to begin with, right? Basically, we start thinking about our whiff punish buttons, right? We have standing heavy punch. Has a lot of startup, but also pretty nice knockdown potential. For example, we can go straight into EX Orochi. We can also go into EX Orochi off a of crashing medium punch, but the issue with the medium punch is that the range is much less. Right? Here? Nice. Here? Not as nice. You sacrifice a faster normal for a lot more range, and that's where you start having to make the judgment of, okay, how far away am I from the character? Is it worth making that risk, yes or no? Now, the biggest issue with Standing Heavy Punch is, again, it has a lot more uh, startup. Also, most of the time, you can't do it, like, very up close because, again, it's pretty minus. But one thing you can do, which is what I sometimes have to do online when it gets particularly laggy, is cancel into Orochi, which is minus two. You lose your turn, but again, not really punishable. Now is it? But one other issue is, you can actually hit her right out of the Orochi if your timing is not is not tight. 
So one other button that's incredible is Crouching Medium Kick. This is probably her best button for whip punishing. The range for that is insane. The startup, very fast. The recovery, very fast. The active frames, very generous. So one thing you want to do is shimming in and out and basically looking for that opening. And there you go. One meter punish, nice damage, Oki, we're in business. So now we talked about basic concepts around whiff punishing and thinking about our buttons. And now we're going to be kind of having the thought now of what are some big gimmicks you see online? The gimmicks that you just cannot stop seeing and it's making you mad, making you consider using your own gimmicks. I understand. I personally don't like losing to gimmicks as much as the next person, but unfortunately, Karina is not exactly a character whose gimmicks will get you any wins offline. Maybe some online, but again, I'm going to quote Brian F and say, this is a gambler situation where you think to yourself, oh, this stupid strategy worked once or twice or three times. Every now and then it works online, so I should just keep doing it, right? No, you do it based off the player. If you are learning the game, I in fact discourage you from doing it in general. You want to start trying to implement gimmicks in neutral when you have an understanding of a player, and not so much doing it just as a Hail Mary. So we'll be going into a few examples. So we're going to be going into everyone's favorite special, my favorite special, your favorite special, the special that made me famous or notorious. This stupid move. Now, is it good? Sometimes. What is it used for? Mostly fireballs. Every now and then as like a middle finger in neutral. Yes, you can sometimes use it. But, do you mash it? Absolutely not. It may work every now and then online, but it is a stupid move and it will make you lose neutral. It will make you lose your opportunities to strike in neutral. You basically are giving up your turn to do something very stupid that at the end of the day will barely give you any reward. A small knockdown. No meter, nothing. The only time you can really use it with meter is with super, but I highly discourage this move. I have to discourage myself from using this move. Don't mash Resenha. It's a stupid as hell move. Now you're asking me, why should I not use Resenha? I see my peers do it online. I've seen you do it sometimes. And it's like, yeah, we're not all perfect. It's sometimes a panic button, we all have those. We all have had our periods of not being particularly good at the game, myself included. So let's go over why Resenha is not a move you should be using most of the time. So we're going to be going exactly as to why this move sucks. This is punishable. If you do your light one, this one is harder to react to, I guess, because if you're doing this online, I guess. Again, I am air quoting as hard as I can. Punishable. Okay, that's cool. But what if we make Bison just press jab? Jab, punish. Now what if we do this? Punish. Again, these are all punishable situations. I'm just using jab as an example. If Bison wanted to, he could do a full combo and just mess you up every single day of the week. You know what? If you match this, you can get super. You can get punished. It sucks. Please, for the love of God, don't be stupid with her Senha. Learn from my mistakes. Trust me. I'm gonna go into the gimmicks on why we shouldn't be doing this. So, that's a gimmick. It worked, but again, that's a gimmick. That's punishable. Again, this is when you're first starting to play the game or not fully understanding neutral. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. You're still learning. But this is what it looks like to not be effective in your neutral. That there was actually pretty good. I would still do that now. But again, that's punishable. It's only working because this is year one of Street Fighter V. If I try to do this now, I would get eaten alive. Yeah, again, this is just kind of embarrassing for me. <laughs> See, I'm, okay, maintaining space. The candy probably could have gone in to punish. That's plus. Yeah, I deserve that. Again, this is without understanding frame data, and I'm just pressing buttons. 
and again, you you see, you see, like, there is some monochrome of understanding coming from me of what is a good button, but I'm not, like, fully effective in my punishes. Again, this is before I think I knew how to do, uh, yeah, Senkojo Orochi. And here, again, that was lucky. I, <laughs> that was luck. I, that was, uh, no, that was just me being lucky. I, I just mashed. Okay, I'm being a little bit patient. Oh, there we go, there's the gimmick. The, they could have reacted with CA. Again, I deserve this. And this is what it looks like to be playing with gimmicks. It sometimes works, it sometimes doesn't. Again, I was just gambling. This was just gambling. I was going into the slot machines and hoping the Kami wasn't punishing stuff. For all I know, I could have lost that match horribly and still not know why I lost, because I'm pressing gimmicks. And this is why you don't want to be playing gimmicks. It doesn't particularly teach you or reinforce anything. It's just reinforcing the gambler mentality. And again, if you're having fun playing, uh, just playing, like, mashing and having fun, that's perfectly fine. But if you want to improve, if you want to play at a competitive level, these are habits that you have to shake off. So look, I'm probably going to go over Senha into Super. Rasenha. Now. This is one I would have done Rasen Wow. I have much more patience than I give myself credit for. Oh, that should have been death. I don't know why I didn't die. Oh, I did. Did I lose? Yeah, okay. I thought I won. No, yeah, but again. I lost this match because I was playing like a gambler. So what was it that led to my death? I was pressing. I was pressing a heavy button, probably. I deserve that. This reinforces the fact that you shouldn't be playing like a gambler. You have to be playing smart. And once again, you learn how to be play a lot more smart by reinforcing proper neutral, proper uh, fundamentals. It's not a problem if you have fun playing, just pressing buttons and stuff, but if you want to play at a tournament level, it's something you're gonna have to just shake off. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm sorry it took so long to make this following part. Hopefully the next few parts take a little bit shorter to make, and I hope you can get a basic taste on how neutral can apply to your game plan. It's a little bit hard to do this in fighting games because it's not only the mechanics of the characters, but also the opponents who are playing said characters. I hope you all enjoyed your time watching this, and I hope you can put some of these lessons you learn into your own neutral plan, and let's both improve together on our game plans and become better players.